today we're going to be servicing this Bosch condensing dryer and I'm trying to diagnose FO9 problems and we're going to do a complete tear down of the thing. First thing is we got to get it out of this alcove here so I take a squirt bottle and I squirt it down at the, the feet on the bottom and then I uh, just start trying to inch it left and right back and forth until I get it freed from the floor and then I scooch it one corner at a time we're going to walk this sucker out. Okay, so I've got the washer and dryer pulled out. One potential problem that hasn't necessarily been a problem but I think it can be is this hose here and some to, it has no support. And This is the drain hose for the dryer and it can get kinked or at least obstruct the flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie this thing so it's got a nice curve to it and it's not going to get obstructed. Okay, so we've got that. Next, now what we're going to do is we're going to unplug the washer and uh, both we've already unplugged the, the dryer and now we've unplugged the washer. Now we're going to remove all these screws around here to pull out this back plate. Okay, so I removed seven large torque screws on the top, seven smaller torque screws in the bottom and you can see there's a lot of lint on the various parts here and so I'm gonna vacuum all of this up first. Here is our thermal, uh, thermal limiter with a reset button. This can get blown, you have to manually reset that, that'll typically cause FO9. And this is the thermostat here. So let's get do that. So this is proving to be the most challenging part of the job is trying to clean these in here. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see, sorry, but the only, the, the only way I've been able to find to get in there is with this small flat bladed screwdriver. There, I think you can see that. Gotta get all the way back there. Scrape that out of there. I've tried toothbrushes, I've tried all the kind of brushes that I had. This is the only way that I can get that stuff clean in there. So we're trying to clean all that out. Now here's another little fun one. So at the bottom here is a tube that runs. I'm not exactly sure where, but look at all the stuff I got out of that. Take a wet rag and you shove it in here. Then you can use the wheel to help clean all those icky surfaces. Okay, so the wheel area is all clear. And now we're going to take off the shield here and see what's under there. Okay, so here's the shield, the back side of the shield, and underneath the shield, so we're going to have to clean this out. And then next up here is the actual heating element. We're going to check to make sure there's not a lot of debris up there and remove the heating element. Okay, so here's the back side of the heating element. It plugs in there, and you can see how much junk is here. That is actually the thermostat, and there's the resettable fuse. You can see how much junk is in here. That can't be good. So I am going to try to clean this out. You can't just wash this because that's electrical components. So I'm just going to carefully brush this out. I've now cleaned the element. I'm going to reinstall it all and then test the components. to test this effectively I wasn't able to heat it from outside so I'm prying up these tabs I can actually take the thermostat out and heat it effectively okay there we go okay here I've got the replacement a brand new thermostat here we're going to test on 200,000 ohms I've got it hooked up to my meter here and we're going to apply heat See what happens. Two, it's 20 ohms now. We've got a hot. Where we are now, so it's down to five ohms, and it looks like it's 120 degrees there. And it's five kilo ohms. 120 is probably hotter than it's going to experience in that dryer. And now, as it cools down, I don't know if I have a cooling setting on this or not. 
Doesn't look like I have a cooling setting. As it cools down, it should be warming up. We'll check again in a minute or two, but it should be back up to 20 ohms. Okay, so we're back up, back down to 97, 95 degrees, and now we're at 12.5 kilo ohms and heading on our way back up. So it's definitely, that's the way it's supposed to work. So I've made another very interesting discovery. What I've got here is a heating gun, and when I heat this to about 110 degrees, it causes the filter light to go on. Uh, let's try that. Okay, the heater's now on. So we're heating that thermostat up. Resistance is going to be dropping. Boom. Let's. Okay, now let's check what temperature we got it up to here. It says 130 degrees, so maybe it's more than 100, more than 110, maybe it's 130. Okay, and so what we have here is a flashing three, three bars there, and then the filter light is flashing. And I've reproduced this, and I've let it run for 10 minutes to make sure that our filter wasn't the problem. And yeah, this is definitely the situation. So when that thermostat gets too hot, the, the filter light comes on. There's a third thermostat in here called the NTC. Yeah, there are actually uh, several of them are NTCs. That little pin right here, that's the NTC. But unfortunately, to get at, get at it, the only way appears to be to remove the whole front door. After half an hour trying to get the front panel off, I finally figured out how to take this panel off instead. So there's three clips here. One, two, three. And they're the weirdest clips I've seen. Um, I guess basically they expect you to just pull. I inserted a screwdriver here, and then from the top inserted another screwdriver. If you push that down, it'll release, or if you pull hard enough, it'll release. So it's got three more at the bottom. We're gonna repeat that procedure, and hopefully we'll be ready. Okay, so I've got this panel off. And yeah, they got plenty of clips securing that. And apparently they expect you to take that off before taking the front panel off. Okay, here is the NTC. There is its connector right there. And uh, now what I'm going to try to do is remove that NTC and test it uh, versus a new one. And it looks like there's two more screws. Maybe the front would come off. And here's another area to clean up in here. Okay, so here's that NTC negative temperature coefficient. And I've got it hooked as an ohm meter, 200 ohms. Let's see what temperature this is that. Okay, so as I expected, dropping in resistance as the temperature goes up, and it should return to its normal. So this has got down to 2.2. Um, can't remember what it was originally. So what I found is that when this thing heats up, it will actually uh, it tell the dryer that the cycle is done. And what we get up here is the uh, wrinkled lock slash end light and a zero. So um, I, I'm still figure, trying to, I can't figure out what the F will cause is F09. If this is unplugged, it says F08. Um, I don't know what causes F09. I'm going to have to look at the dryer that's malfunctioning and see, if, see what is behaving differently now. Okay, this is a thermostat and heat limiter with a resettable fuse from uh, a dryer that has been showing F09, but it seems to be functioning correctly. Right now, it's, it has complete continuity, zero ohms. Now I'm going to use this heat gun and let's see at what point it seems to be blowing at around 140 degrees right now that the thermometer is there we go. Just heard a little click and it's showing zero. Now let's take a thermometer here. Looks like it's a, it was about 130. It's quickly dropping temperature. So 
so 130. And I could not simulate this with a hair dryer, so it seems to be the source heat needs to be more intense, intense than a hair dryer. So, and then there's a button on the back. If I reach up, push the button. You hear that click? There's just a little bit of a little hat switch. I mean, um, when the thermal disc heats up too much, it pushes that button out. And now we have complete continuity again. So that's how that should be operating. This seems to be turning off at about 130. This is a Bosch condensing dryer with the F09 problem and I am diagnosing what is causing this. So one crucial key is that um, you must have some damp clothes in the dryer or you cannot reproduce the problem. If you don't have damp clothes, it will just um, cycle and end. Um, the, the real problem is that there's no heat and you can check this by sticking your hand afterwards. It's still cool. And let's go around back. And here is the problem. So I've taken off the hood on the back of this one. And here's the problem is this button here has blown. And in, in, um, so if you, if you push the button down, you hear a little click. Now the dryer will work. But that's only a temp, well, that's a fix. You have to figure out why this is blowing. And that's what my next job here is going to be.